There we are. Oh my goodness. Hi, Lois. How are you? Good afternoon, everybody. This is Joyce from BoQ Creations. I hope everybody's having a wonderful day. I'm so excited and I just can't hide it because it's Tuesday and I'm trying something new. Okay, that's it. Hi, Diane. Happy New Year. How are you? Hey, look, guys, I want to show you something. Check this out. Let check this out. Check this out. Here we go. Here we go. Um, I'm gonna go back this way. Watch. Near. Far. Near. <laughs> far. <laughs> Hi, Eric. How are you? Hi, Lois. Hi, Diana. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. Um, I'm having I'm having fun today because. Um, as it turns out, I was uh, my IT guy. I told you guys I'm an IT 10T error. You're ironing old patterns on freezer paper. Look at you, Diana. Oh, my hell. Oh, my hell. So, anyway, I talked to Joseph for a good long time last night. And as it turns out, I am truly an ID 10T error. That's what it is. Let me let me write that real big um, for you guys. Let's let's just do this. If you guys are like me and you are an I D ten T user error, you will understand what I mean when it comes to computers. Look at that. Oh, you guys, why is it not showing you what I'm showing you? There you go. Let's see. Okay. There we go. Happy New Year's, Helen. How are you? How are you? How are you? Okay. So, <laughs> that's fun. Okay, I am frozen. That's no bueno. All right, so let's, let's get us back onto a screen that we know. Okay. There we go. Um, come on, come on screen, work with me, work with me. Okay, here we go. Okay, so anyway, as it turns out, an ID10T user error, yours truly, when it comes to technology, um, I had the remote controls for my cameras that make me be able to zoom in and zoom out. I had them the whole time, the whole time in my possession and I didn't even know it. So here I've been trying to bring everything up to the camera and show you guys and guess what? I had the the thing as it was. I had it already I had it already in my um, possession and I didn't even know that. So yeah. All right, so give me one quick second because I am trying to um, get our picture in picture up. Um, it is not wanting to click off and and participate. So give me one quick second. I'm going to reinstall it and see what happens. Joseph is a wealth of technology, wealth of information when it comes to this uh, software thing that I'm using. So um, yeah. So give me one quick second. Okay, there we go. There is my. We're going to put that up there so that you guys can see. And then I'm going to stretch that. And then I got something new to show you guys today, something I have been um, wanting to try. And I have not been able to, um, oh gosh, my, give me one second. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. This thing is driving me nuts because it is, you know, technology. And yours truly is an ID10T error. There we go. I'm hoping that that does the trick. I'm hoping. Okay, we'll see in just one minute if that works. All right, let's see who is on today. Oh my goodness. Um, Diane Enlow. Hello, Ann. Lois, how are you? 
Joanne is here. Hi, Joanne. Roberta, Helen, Verna. Hi, y'all. Hi, Heather. Um, Diana says, I have a ton of McCall's patterns. Yes. So um, one of the things that we're doing this month is the um, vintage vignette. So um, we are going to be working with those McCall patterns, Diana. So that's going to be kind of cool. So Happy New Year, Cherie. I had it the whole time. The whole time. All right, so um, for whatever reason, this camera is not on. That's very interesting. It's like, um, okay, so doo -doo -doo. can we reset, please? It's like all of a sudden my camera is not wanting to... Um, It's not wanting to work. Isn't that crazy? Okay, well, here we go. Anyway, let me see what my picture in picture does for me. Can you guys see me? See my hand? See, it's not my hands only cam. It's not working. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry, you guys. It was on just a second ago, and then it was not. So let's see what happens when we do this. I apologize. If not, I'm just going to go ahead and um, I'm just going to go ahead with what I'm doing, uh, and then we'll see how things go. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, now it's working. So let's see if I can leave well enough alone, and um, you guys can see my hands. All right, here we go. Okay. Can y'all see my hands, everybody? My ID10T error. It's focusing on my table. Yeah, I know. Roberta says, I see your shoulder. Well, don't I have a lovely shoulder, Roberta? <laughs> um, yeah. So my picture in picture is a little bit off. So let's see if we can get that back on for you guys. We're going to put that on top. There we go. There we go. Now, hopefully, you're not seeing my shoulder anymore. You're actually seeing my face. Okay. So, let me tell you about what I'm doing today. Okay. So, what I'm doing today. Hi, Jolene. You're waiting in line to check out. That sounds like fun. Okay. So, um, what I'm doing today. Remember, I told you guys about using your old wrapping paper. I know we've already done wrapping paper, but I wanted to show you one more technique um, in using the wrapping paper. But before we get to that, I want to show you how those snowflakes from last night turned out. You know, sometimes they don't turn out the way you expect them to, and sometimes they turn out better. So I took some of these rice paper um, snowflakes that I made. They're very dainty. And um, the ones that we made last night that I'm going to use on my live today. Look at these ones with the sparkles. So here's what I learned um, last night from my conversation with Joseph. So check this out. All I have to do is push a button and then I can zoom in and you guys can see how amazing and beautiful those snowflakes are. Isn't that cool? I love that. I love that I had the technology and everything was right there. Yeah, everything's 90% off Christmas at Hobby Lobby. Yes, this is the time that you need to go find that beautiful wrapping paper that you want to make this technique out of. So, um... Anyway, I found this gorgeous um, snowflake wrapping paper, and you know that I told you guys that this month is um, this month is uh, I C Adventures, I C Y Adventures. I know, isn't that just the bomb? It's the bee's knees, and I had it the whole time. Who knew? So now I can take and I can zoom it in, and then I can bring it up, and you guys can absolutely see the detail on that or I can back it out 
Look at that. Great, great, great. Okay, so now that I've had fun playing with that, I have two more um, snowflakes from my um, rice paper that I cut out yesterday. And I wanted to show you that I did these with embossing powder. So I think that I'm going to use these three and I'm going to show you this uh, technique that I'm that I'm trying for the first time today. Okay, with the wrapping paper. Now, it requires a couple of things that you may not um, you may not have, but if you do, then you are already at an advantage. Okay, so the first thing that you need to have is a thermal laminator. Okay, if you have one of those um, thermal laminators that you know, takes the laminating pouches. That's what I'm going to be using today. So um, this is a new technique for me. I saw something similar to this on online, and I was not sure whether or not it would come out well. So I thought, you know what? I want to go ahead and try this um, with you guys watching because if it works, great. If it doesn't, well... At least we tried it and you guys will know that it doesn't work so I've got a laminating pouch here this is um, this is one of those type of pouches that you put the paper in between the two plastic sheets somewhere there's an end to this you you insert the paper inside the um, thing here and you go to town so what I thought today is I'm going to take a piece of that beautiful rice paper, that, that white um, rice paper, and I'm going to do some stamping on the rice paper. Let me get a sheet here. Okay. So this is rice paper. It has a shiny side and a dull side. So even if you don't have your own um, laminating machine you can still do this technique you just need to be able to iron the laminating um, the laminating thing so these are eight and a half by eleven laminating pouches they are the standard um, piece of paper so I have to cut this down to like eight and a quarter there we go eight and a quarter I want to make sure nobody's oh Verna says okay I have one good Okay, so eight and a half by, oh my hell, look what I did. Look what I did. Okay, so that piece is going to have to be saved for something else. Um, I cut off on the wrong side. I needed to cut off on the long side at 11, which was actually 10 and three quarters because, um, oh my trimmer doggone it doesn't that isn't that always the way like you go try to do something and there's like fuzz or something in there in your trimmer I hate when that happens okay there we go so then I need to make this seven and three quarters because the standard pouch is eight and a half by eleven so I want to make sure that I've started off with the right size pouch I mean the right size paper for my pouch so what I'm gonna attempt to make both with this piece of rice paper and with a piece of wrapping paper is something for our Icy Adventures Challenge. For those of you that were not on last night, um, BoQ thought it would be a great idea. Our design team, Jennifer, Heather, and I decided that it would be a great idea to kind of, to kind of um, have a theme and a challenge. And so here's what's going to happen. You guys are going to make something that goes with an icy adventure and you are going to um, you're going to take a picture of it when you're comp when you're done and you're going to post it on the BoQ crew and then at the end of the month somebody will be chosen one person will be chosen at random by putting the BoQ hashtag the hashtag is BoQ monthly challenge BoQ monthly challenge BQ monthly challenge and um, you will be entered 
for a drawing to win something just for posting and playing along with our challenge. I'm going to just cut this down a little bit because I can't work with it so long. There we go. I have my thermal laminator heating up back here. So I'm going to choose, this is Icy Adventures because it's got snowflakes on it. So I feel like it's kind of icy. Maybe not icy, icy, but it's icy enough for me to do this technique with. And then I thought, you know what? It's got all these beautiful snowflakes on it. So maybe I can um, create what I'm trying to create out of it. I figured it might work a little bit. So again, I've got to cut this paper down so that it will fit in the pouch. And I'm going to do 10 and 3 quarters. So I've got this beautiful wrapping paper. This was given to me on a gift from Joyce Johns. So Joyce, thank you very much. So 8 and a half, I'm going to go 8 and a quarter. And now that I have the correct size for my laminating pouch, that'll be great. Okay. I never did the wax paper before. Pretty cool. Oh, good. I'm glad you guys are learning something. Yay. Okay. So this one ought to be pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, I'm going to actually laminate this piece. Now, the inside of this is going to be white, but that's okay because um, I can stamp on this. I could, um, I could put my snowflakes on this, all of my little um, snowflakes that I did, but I'm just going to leave it white because um, I can always post something on there. So let me show you what I was thinking. So I have my rice paper here. I have my laminating pouch here. And I also have my um, thermal laminator already set. Okay. If you need some of these thermal pouches, we have them here at the store. I'm going to save this one for just a moment, the rice paper. But the wrapping paper is pretty straightforward. I'm going to insert it into the laminating pouch just like this. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to take the outside of the laminating pouch, just like that. And I'm going to run this through the thermal laminator. Okay. So basically what I'm doing is laminating this piece of wrapping paper. But I have some schmutz inside of here. So I don't want schmutz inside of my, inside of my thing. Which side up, Verna says. Um, Honestly, Verna, I don't know that it makes all that difference in the world. I, I, I don't know. Um, does it really make a difference? Which side? I don't know. I should see that. I don't, I don't know if, um, if that's going to make a difference. I'm just trying to get my edges kind of straight here. Um, it's important when you're laminating something that you don't put it all the way to the edge because the paper doesn't get sealed in there. Oh, the rice paper. I haven't done the rice paper yet. We'll do that in just a minute. So let me run this through so that we can do one of our, um, one of our things. So it is on the way through. Now the rice paper has a matte side and it has a shiny side and we'll, we'll, I'll show you the difference in that with the piece that I messed up. How about that? Uh, let's find those. Okay. There we go. That's the piece that I messed up. Oh, how pretty is this thing coming out? I can't, I can't begin to tell you. Okay. Um, the swap of the month is coming. It is coming. Okay. I have this gorgeous, gorgeous stamp. I want to make sure my thing doesn't fall on the floor. Come on. It's coming. Okay, so this is the laminated piece of wrapping paper, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with this in just a moment, okay? I want to show you about this rice paper, and then we will do what I wanted to show you with this, this piece. So first of all, it does laminate quite nicely, 
So um, if you have a really pretty piece of wrapping paper that you want to save, um, that makes a really nice thing. Okay. Um, instead of using snowflakes on this paper, I'm going to use my stamps. Hi, Sandy. How are you? I was thinking about you yesterday, actually. I hope you're doing well. Happy New Year. Okay, so Verna asked the question, which side on the rice paper? Okay, so rice paper, when you look at it, it is very strong. Let me show you guys. Do you see this? I'm trying to rip this paper, and I cannot rip it. I cannot tear it. Now, if I, if I do this, yes, I can tear it. But when you put water on this paper, it turns like tissue paper. It is very, very thin and very, um, it's just very thin. And so the cool thing about rice paper, yes, you do have a surprise coming from me today. The cool thing about rice paper is that one side of it is kind of a shiny surface, and then if you turn over on the other side, it's more of a um, textured surface. So it just really depends on um, what you're doing and what kind of uh, look that you're going for. I've got this beautiful fern stamp right here that I want to stamp onto my rice paper. And I'm going to show you in just a second. Let me grab my green inks. Let's see. I'm going to use lime zest and dill pickle and pea pod. That's going to be really pretty. Okay. So I wanted to show you the difference between the two pieces after they have been stamped on either side because it does make a difference. Let me cut this in half so that I can stamp on one side as the textured and one side as the um, shiny side. So Icy Adventures this month, guys. Anything that resembles winter or makes product that looks like winter, that's what we're doing this month. I like rice paper because it's strong. Okay, so this is the side that's shiny. It soaks in kind of like uh, a tissue paper would, and this is the textured side. So to keep things equal and all things the same, um, we are going to use same ink, same stamp, just turning the paper over. There we go. So it really is just all about the texture. I don't know that you guys can make out any difference in this one's kind of a matted, muted kind of look, and this one is more of a um, shiny look. Now you can take your paintbrush for for sure. Let me get a little bit of water. So this is what I love about the rice paper. All right. So I can take my paintbrush and I can come in here with the rice paper and I can wet that ink and when it dries, it's going to smear, well not smear, but kind of mute some of that ink. Okay. Why am I showing you this? I just wanted to show you guys. It's, it's really kind of cool. So it kind of behaves like watercolor paper or like regular paper, but when it dries, it's really, really neat. And you can decoupage with it. So that's the other thing that I liked about it is that you can decoupage. Okay, so let me get out my Icy Adventure colors and my, my rice paper that I just cut. Okay. I am absolutely going to use the shiny side. I want to make sure that there's nothing that's going to hurt my... I'm going to use the shiny side, and I'm going to take from those snowflakes that we did yesterday as far as the colors go. So I have this beautiful purple and blue. I've got this blue. I've got some pinks. And I've got this blue. All right. And then I have... Um, the what happened to them? The snowflakes that I made with the there they are with the embossing powder. Here we go. 
Yes. Okay. So what I thought I would do is create a background with my brushes and then I'm just going to put these um, snowflakes onto this piece of rice paper and then I'm going to laminate it. And again, I will show you guys. Hi Ann, how are you? So we have a very light pink, we have a teal, we have a blue and a light purple. Okay, light purple, light blue, a darker blue, uh, like a teal, that one's called snow cone, and then let's get a nice pink bubble gum. I think those kind of resemble the, the snowflakes. So this is my Icy Adventures color on rice paper and I'm going to create my own just using my brushes. There's my purple one. Uh, here's my blue one. Oops, that's a green one. There's my blue one. And I washed it so it's a little bit crunchy. So did you guys do anything special for um, New Year's? All right, getting that brush all nice and... Oh my hell, what color is that? Oh, that's snow cone. That is a very bright color. Okay. I might have to... That was a little brighter than I thought it was going to be. You know what? I'm not going to use my brush after all. I think I'm going to use my paper pouncers. That's what I think I'm going to do. Yeah, let's use my paper pouncers. I just feel like I can get better coverage with those. There we go. Now I could absolutely use a stencil. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna um, daub some of this ink onto my rice paper in certain spots, you know, just to kinda, just to kinda make it don't worry it's it's gonna turn out fine I'm not going for perfection I'm just going for the color that's on here so it kind of resembles a bouquet background I think a little bit and I'm on the shiny side of this rice paper let's just get some colors in here kind of blend no, just blend. All right, so that's enough of the blue. We don't want too, too much blue. We don't want it to be overpowering. Let's get our pink out. There's my pink dauber. Okay, we're going to bring this one in. There we go. Let's get some of that. You don't want too much of the ink on there. You know, like you just want it to be kind of light. And I'm just daubing that in. It's kind of whimsical. But you know what? So what? I'm I'm loving it. Sometimes you need whimsical in your life, you know? Sometimes you need some sort of whimsy. Okay, there we go. There's my pinks. Where did it go? There it is. I know you guys are probably thinking, oh my hell, Joyce, what are you doing? Oh, trust me. Trust me, and you'll see. Let me wipe some of this darker blue off of here because I want to put that lighter blue on. There we go. And I'm just doing a little bit of this right along the edge of this other blue because... Um, and I know that I'm getting circles. I'm kind of wanting that because see that big nasty splotch right there? I don't I don't like that one. Okay, so I'm just daubing that lighter blue over top of that purple. I mean that pink because I'm getting kind of a purplish color. I'm happy with that. All right, now let's get some of that purple in there. Along the edges. Okay. And then watch what I'm going to do with this rice paper. All right, so here is my purple color. Maybe my color choice wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be, but that's okay. I'm fine with it. Okay, I'm going to use my miscellaneous 
dauber since I can't find my purple one. And I'm going to put some of that purple in there. There we go. I'm just having fun with it. I'm having fun with this rice paper, creating a cool background that's going to be under as my background for everything else. See, I'm just putting some of that paper. Oops, it got into my ink up there. That's okay. And then I'm going to use my cream gold sparkle spritz on here maybe. Okay. So there's my lavender. And since I've learned never to question an artist, you know, especially when it's a mad artist like yours truly, you know, sometimes you just have to go with it. All right. So I'm putting these iridescent snowflakes on top of here in spots. This is the wax paper one that I did last night. And I'm going to put a little bit of glue on that snowflake. Oops, come on, lift up. This is the wax paper one that we used with the ground, the iridescent ground from last night. This is wax paper, you guys. So I'm going to put this snowflake onto the paper like this, just directly glue it on. I'm going to take this snowflake that has all of these sequins. Um, I'm not so sure that I want to do all the layers. So remember last night when I cut this out, I cut it out with four layers thick. So I'm just peeling it apart, hopefully. Hopefully it's not stuck too, too much that I can't peel it apart. So I didn't get a chance to tell you why I was so excited. Um, I went down today to book and put a deposit on our crop, our crafting retreat that we are doing May 17th through the 19th. You guys, we have found the best place that we could possibly find. Your food is included, your lodging is included, and guess what? If you're local and you want to come home for the evening and you don't want to stay in a hotel in the same city you live in, well, guess what? We have a commuter rate available for you. Wasn't that nice of them to allow us to have a commuter rate for this event? I mean, because usually they'll say, nope, I'm sorry, we can't do a commuter rate. We want them to stay in our hotel. So, you know, I love that they have given us that option. So if you are local and you want to attend, but you don't want to stay in the hotel, that's fine. Your food and your crop will still be included, and you don't have to stay in the hotel if you don't want to. It's going to be beautiful. I don't know why you wouldn't want to stay there. But, um, yeah, so Heather's going to be here. Anne's going to be here. TJ's coming. Um, we're going to have Michelle from Pink and Maine there on Saturday, plus your whole design team for BoQ Creations. Everybody that is BoQ Creations, we will all be there. Jennifer, Heather, me, the whole group. And so I'm really excited. Um, don't forget that you can put a deposit down on the, um, on the event. You can pay $225 now and $225 later. So, and we do have double rooms and single rooms. So you guys are gonna not want to miss this. This is our it's called a creative retreat. It is not a crop. Um, you can bring your stuff to work on, but we are focusing on teaching you something. So there will be a plethora of classes to for you to choose from. I'm just so excited. We're we're really getting busy. Um, planning this for you guys and we're so excited so those of you that have already registered be know in the next couple of days you're going to be getting a Google form for uh, for you to fill out so that um, we can have some information on you and um, if you're interested you know just let us know and we will be happy to answer questions for you okay look at these beautiful snowflakes isn't this gorgeous and yes, I'm going to put those sequins. I'm hoping of all hopes that they go through the laminator. I don't know if they will, but I'm going to try it. 
who knows if it doesn't work you know what this is why we try different techniques this is why we look and see if it's gonna work if it doesn't then you know what hey we tried and we know for next time that it's not gonna work okay so these are just rice paper snowflakes that I cut out uh, with a die out of the same rice paper that I'm using we have um, I got word that we have our delivery of all of our new products that we are going to be bringing to you guys so save your Christmas money for another day or two because um, you're going to want to see some of the new products that we've got coming in so I'm kind of excited about those look at how pretty that is see there's my snowflakes I have um, a couple more that I can do um, I have this white one right here I wanted to show you how I did this with Versamark I just took my rice paper and I just smushed the snowflake into the Versamark and oops there we go we want to make sure everybody's playing along and then what I'm gonna do is grab my embossing powder there we go I have completely soaked that rice paper with Versamark and I'm gonna take our this right here we have our white enamel that does like a gold glitter and a white enamel because remember this is all about icy adventures and I'm just creating I'm just making sure it's gonna happen right get my tweezers look at how pretty that's gonna be I'm just gonna take this put it back in the container there we go I'm going to take and heat this up with our heat tool. Uh oh, I unplugged. Did I unplug it? Yep, I unplugged it. Hold on just a second. Technical difficulties. guys it got cold in here come on light turn on there we go not that that helps any at all I'll turn the light back on as soon as I get finished heating this Oops, get back here I had so much fun with these snowflakes, you guys. So I told you that I would be um, showing you some different techniques that you could use for the Icy Adventure Challenges and some of the products that you might be able to use. And, um, oh, where's my, oh, are you kidding me? It fell all the way down. Oh, well, <laughs> we'll just turn this light on then. There, now I can see a little bit better. Okay, so I'm just, I needed one more snowflake kind of over here um, so that I can make this happen. I know you guys are probably thinking this is a very roundabout way, Joyce. But you know what? I'm playing. Some of the best work that I've ever done has come from playing and playing. And because I said I'm trying this, I don't know how it's gonna come out I don't know but you know what I'm gonna work it I'm gonna work on it we're gonna see because if it does come out great then I just invented something new if it doesn't come out great well then we throw it away who cares <laughs> right who cares 
All right, so we have this little doodad that we made. Maybe we put it over here. Yeah, kind of like that. There's my icy adventures snowflakes. All right, let's get this on here and then we're going to call it done because I told you I wanted to use my snowflakes that I made last night. And the reason I'm not being really um, careful about gluing it down is because once I put this through the laminator, it's going to be stuck under there anyway, so I'm not concerned about um, you know, it staying glued down. I'm just trying to put a little bit of adhesive so that it stays on the paper while I get it laminated. Does that make sense? So there we go. So this is going to have the gems and everything, the embossing powder, my sequins. I'm just going to scrape some of the thicker ones off because, you know, sometimes they get in several layers. So there we go. And now I have this gorgeous snowflake thing snowflake patterns and what did I do with my so the next thing I want to do is I want to take one of my mediums that I have uh, let's see let's use the super sparkle luminaire why not all right that's super sparkly I got my paintbrush here and I'm going to take a tiny bit of this paint and I'm going to put it on my mat just like that. I'm going to add some water to it. And you guys can do this anytime that you like. Oh, come on. Come back up, please. Why are you not coming back up. Play. I touched a button on my thing and it's not coming back up. So don't ask me any questions at the moment because I don't know. There we go. All right. So I'm going to grab some of this paint. I need to make it very watery because this jacquard paint is very, very thick. It's very good paint. And what am I going to do with it? I'm going to splatter it. Why not? See? I can take and I can just splatter. I can do a splatter pattern on here. It's not splattering very well, so I need more water because it has to be really, really thin. There we go. That's splattering. Oh, I love it. I love it. And it's giving me a really nice um, really nice coverage, kind of a shiny, kind of a shiny iridescent sparkle. It looks like it's getting more on my mat than it is on the paper, so maybe I need to come over a little bit or use my splatter brush because that's what it's for. Okay, anyway, I don't want to go too much. So I've got a couple of little splatters here and there that I think I can be happy with. Maybe I need a little bit more. Let me get a little bit more paint. The reason I'm not doing this with the white, um, the Doc Martens, is because this has sparkle in it. And I want to be able to, I want to be able to get that sparkle on there. That's what I'm going for. I need some right over here in this corner. Come on. Can you please sparkle over there? Thank you. All right. Let me wipe that off. Okay. Now, I'm going to take this whole piece and I'm going to run it through my thermal laminator. And then I'll show you what we're doing with the thermal laminated pieces, okay? That was the whole thing in a nutshell, was create my own background so that I can send it through the thermal laminator. 
and this is rice paper you guys rice paper okay so yes it's going to be kind of wonky on the back side but it's okay because for what i'm doing with it it will be fine all right now you see that i have this in the laminating pouch which these are kind of cheap so don't worry if um i think that's going to be kind of big but we'll see if it goes through why not here we go we are inserting it into the laminator uh oh my laminator went off because we waited too long okay we gotta wait for it to heat up again doggone it well in that case let me go ahead and clean off my mat so that all of our ink and stuff does not get on our pouch <laughs> see what happens when you take too long being creative oops that's not the paint lid when you take too long being creative your machines shut off and they lose faith in you I hate it when that happens turn this one around maybe I can get some light here I don't like when I don't have enough light must have more light all right it is almost heated up luckily it doesn't take very long to clean up I mean to heat up because it uh, it was already hot so I am going to get my stencil cleaner out here by the way you guys if you have not tried the BoQ stencil cleaner you gotta get some you gotta it cleans everything all right are we hot yet almost ready all right <laughs> get a fan brush I have one Cherie actually it's in the sink waiting to be cleaned yeah this um, this Tim Holtz brush like this this is my favorite splatter tool this one right here if you guys like splattering um, this fan brush from Tim Holtz, um, I love it. it. It gives you, like you put your white in there and then you just bap it on your finger and this holds so much white. You see that? How much white this holds? So I was using it in my, um, my other project and I didn't wash it. That's why it was not available for me to use today because I don't clean my tools when I get done playing. I should, but I don't. Okay, our laminator is ready. We're going to take this piece and we're going to run it through. And I'm hoping of all hopes that these sequins are not too high for this, but we'll see in just a minute. Here we go. Into the laminator. Do your job, laminator. I did get splatters all over my remote control. Okay, let's see. Is it going in? Is it going through? It looks like it. I think we're going to be fine, guys. I think we're going to be fine. It looks like it's going to go through. I might send it back through one more time. A fan brush or a wood grain glaze brush? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I just want to show you that those sequins did go through the laminator. That is awesome. I am going to send it through one more time just because I want to make sure that this does not open up for the reason that I'm doing it. And it's okay. You can always send something through the laminator a second time. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt it. All right. So while that one is going through, we have this one. Now, you guys might have asked me, Joyce, what are you doing with this? Well, guess what I decided that this was going to make? This is going to make a beautiful cover 
for my album. This one is going to make a pocket. Come on, Laminator. You can do it. <laughs> you can do it. There we go. That second time through, it just settled into those sequins and it looks amazing. Y'all see that? How is my lighting? Is it good? Okay. I feel like I'm in the dark over here. Okay. So I'm going to take uh, my scissors and I'm going to trim down. There we go. I'm going to trim down my excess laminating. Because you know it is a little bit longer. And now this is going to become the cover of my next junk journal. And here's the cool part that I like. When I close my junk journal and I put my latch on here or my rubber band or whatever it is that I want to put on the inside, now I have a, hold on, hold on, let me show you. So now inside of my journal, Okay, so this is going to be my journal cover. So inside of my journal cover, when I open it, guess what I'm going to have in here? Uh-huh. Ha! How awesome is that? So I will have the inside cover of my journal that I can journal on and wipe off so I can make some notes on the inside cover of my journal so if there's something that I want to particularly keep or information that I want to keep I can just write it down wipe it off if I want to make a note if it's my coupon thing if it's whatever I can just put it on there and then wipe it off with a paper towel and it becomes a kind of whiteboard for me so this could be the inside, the outside cover of my journal. And then I would just sew my junk journal or my, my signatures into the cover of the journal. How awesome is that? So that's the first thing that I would do. Now with the second one that we made, of course you could do anything. You could stamp. The important thing with laminating, in case you don't know this, guys, is don't cut your lamination all the way to the edge of your um, the edge of your paper because when you do that, it lets air in, and once you let the air in, it no longer is water soluble. I mean, water water resistant. So I'm just cutting it off a little bit to the edge, but I'm not cutting it all the way off. There we go. Now we have these gorgeous, this gorgeous rice paper snowflake icy adventure page. Could you do this with any paper? I'm sure you could. I'm sure you could. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this one is I'm actually going to fold this one in half. Now I know my snowflakes are kind of getting smushed and I should have thought about that before I did that and I'm gonna fold this in half and like I said this is going to become a pocket for my journal I just need to burnish this down and you know these are so daggum cheap anyway it doesn't matter and you know you can utilize these in a lot of ways these these sheets but look at how cute that is so I'm going to stitch up the side here let me grab my little um, sewing machine okay so I've got my little sewing machine here hopefully it will 
um, go through. I know it went through my paper the other day, but I want to make sure it's going to go through my lamination. So, let's see. I'm just stitching the pocket. Oops. All right. So I've stitched that side. Let me stitch this side. Isn't this just the coolest, guys? I am absolutely, absolutely in love with this. Look at that. Do you see the stitching? Oh my gosh, it's going to be so cute. Let's put this in here. Here we go. Da -da -da. like what the heck kind of sewing machine is that I know I know isn't that cool okay so I'm going to also sew down the other side just for um, the sake of <coughs> just for the sake of uh, making it cohesive and here we go uh oh what'd I do what'd I do uh oh what happened what happened my little machine the little machine that could come on you can do it Okay, there we go. Everything is good. We got that good. I just didn't. I'm not a seamstress, you guys. So, you have to forgive me. I am not one that sews, but this little machine makes it easy. Um, this is one of my great finds of 2023. Yep. Okay, here we go. Now we're going to do it. Come on through the sequence. You can do it. You can do it. Yay! All right. Look at that. Oh my gosh, you guys. I'm so excited. So this is a Singer hand sewing machine. And you can use it as a desktop or handheld. You just push the button and it just nya, 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 through, the, through the machine. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I knew you guys were going to love it if you just stayed with me. Look at that. Now I have a great pocket pouch that I can... Put all of my little goodies in and I'm just going to take a punch, a circle punch or some sort of, I don't know, I guess I could do like that and just put that in the middle there and let me get, yeah, all right, do I want to, that's the front, I want to make that the front, that's pretty, okay, so here we go, so I'm just going to draw a half circle on here there we go and I'm going to cut out said half circle like this with my scissors da -da -da. and look at that now I have a gorgeous pocket that I can put in my planner. I can stitch in my planner or inside of my journal and I have a great pocket 
that is nice and stitched shut with my little machine that I just sewed. Anybody can do it, guys. It does do on... Um, <laughs> I know. And Diane, you're going to laugh, but this machine was less than $20. It was less than $20. Isn't that amazing? So you got your thermal laminating machine. You can make your own paper, make your own snowflakes, use your products, laminate it. And then I'm not even worried about that because my stencil cleaner will absolutely wipe that off. Watch. Watch, watch, watch. Stencil cleaner gets off permanent marker. No, it doesn't. Alcohol gets off permanent marker. My stencil cleaner will. I just got to get enough of it. My stencil cleaner is good for anything. There we go. Now it's coming off. So there we go. What do y'all think? Journal covers out of wrapping paper. Pockets out of snowflakes and inks and whatever. And oh my hell, I stitched it closed. Aren't you guys proud of me? I know you guys were not thinking that this is what was going to occur today. But guess what? That's what you do, folks, when you're an artist and you like to play, right? That is what you do. You play, and then you make it, and you're good to go. All right, so my face cam looks like it is frozen in some sort of weird contortion. Um, so there we go. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to delete that one because I don't want you guys to have to look at my face in that contorted. All right. So I'm going to video capture device. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's see. There we go. Now it's back. All right, there's my face. My face. So you guys, I, I thought this was a lot of fun. Um, I wanted to try something new. It worked. I got a journal cover for one of my journals and it's got a wipe off part in the inside. So now I can just put my cover, put my signatures in here and I have a gorgeous little snowflake covered um, journal. And then I have a gorgeous handmade created pocket complete with the stitching on all those snowflakes that we made yesterday. So how beautiful is that? Let's do our picture in picture. There you go. And I'm going to zoom in on that on that camera for you. Isn't that cool? I bet you guys had no idea that's where I was going with that today, huh? Bet you had no idea whatsoever. There we go. Isn't that cool? So there is your, there's your snowflake cover and there's your handmade cover. So with that, maybe it's not for everybody, but the point is, is that you try the technique. If it works, you know, if it works, then you make your own pocket. You create your own paper. Find something that, um, you know, find some paper that you like and then laminate it. It works. And then you use your little sewing machine and you cut it. Um, and there you go. So, you know, maybe you don't like the paper. Maybe you don't like the snowflakes. Maybe you're not going to use this pocket in your junk journal or whatever, but the technique is there. That's what the important thing is. So maybe you try it with your paper and whatever it is that you want to see. And that's, that's it. So the whole point of this is to show you something maybe you didn't know when you walked into our, uh, live today. So I hope you all have a wonderful day. I will see you all tomorrow. Remember, tomorrow Jennifer will be here. She has promised she's feeling better. And um, she's going to reveal the Valentine's kit that we have coming out. I'm so excited. You guys are going to love, love, love this kit. I can't wait to show you. I cannot wait to um, reveal it and Jennifer's going to be here to talk about it and that is the fun part so 
7 o'clock tomorrow night, normal time on Wednesday. I hope you guys have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow. I'm going to go warm up and have some lunch. Bye, guys.